Now we're getting somewhere. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for our weekly mod collection demo shop update. However, first, a message from Gibson. Dear Trogly, stop telling people that the USA Adam Jones standard is discontinued. It's not. Nah, just kidding, it was much nicer than that. Apparently, the reported discontinuation of the Adam Jones Les Paul is false. It was just an error on the web team's end as they were updating the site. So these are now back to notify me when available. So you don't have to go rush out and buy it. They're going to stay in production longer. That news honestly kind of saddens me though, because I feel the silver burst market has been so oversaturated. I started to like those again because now they truly felt limited edition, but just a large batch production run. So we'll have to see how long they keep making those. But now, get your spandex on, they finally did a proper 80s explorer this week. They called it Hammered Gold Crackle. And look at it, it's just one of those really cool paint jobs, it vaguely looks like leopard skin. And then if we adjust the contrast a little bit, you can tell there's like a reddish hue and then some yellows. It's not just black and yellow everywhere. To make things even cooler, they threw a TP6 tailpiece on there just to give it some extra 70s and 80s flair. But is that all they did for 3400 bucks? Well, there's no matching headstock. But have no fear, they did it on the back, which likely means maybe they did it on the sides, maybe they left it plain, I think it would look good either way. But then get a load of the neck. This is kind of an interesting choice to leave that as a stinger design. You tell me, do you dig this, or would you rather have just all been crackle painted? I do notice something very strange though. This Gibson USA now has the custom shop style ink stamp serial. Likely because you could no longer read it anymore. That's a great idea, mod collection. And adds to the uniqueness of this. Love it or hate it, we're on the right direction. Because that one sold fast and anything else they do like that will as well. But if that was a little bit too crazy for you, they also did Forest Jewel Satin for 3000 so this more so looks like a custom color 80s explorer to me. Like not one of the really wild refinished out there ones. And not necessarily from the designer series. We're talking things like my custom ordered blue explorer. Except for this one's green and they decided to black out all the hardware. However, this one does get the matching headstock. They blacked out the nut. Looks like they gave it a new silver Gibson decal. And they continued that paint job on the back, sides, and neck. I don't think it's one that's going to sit around forever, but in my opinion, there's a clear winner here. But now a miraculous version of a 70s explorer. It's the ebony ladybug. So you got like this polka dot design going on here. And oh my goodness. Is that a tiny little kill switch? I didn't notice that. It just looked like a black body with red dots and then a red pig guard with the black dots. And they tried to line them up as best they could. And they give it the voodoo style pickups, blacked everything else out. I was happy enough at that. But now that I know that there's a tiny little bucket head switch right there, that makes me really happy. And did you notice the knobs are also the voodoo style? They let the head stack alone on this one. I was almost expecting a matching one. I feel like we could have did something with the fretboard inlays. Like paint the 12th one with ladybug colors. But now check the back, and that's pretty cool. So it's pretty sweet, right? But the question is, is it $3,500 cool? Or at a $1,000 premium? Yes, it was. But let's stick with our 80s neon theme. Check out this metallic Zinnia. Les Paul Custom listed for at $5,500. A Zinnia, if you're not familiar, is a flower. Maybe they took inspiration from here. But that's a gorgeous dark purple with the gold. It pops without being too boisterous. And it's got the matching gloss headstock. They did an excellent job on that. The sides are matching, as is the back, and it's a complete gloss finish. So yeah, that is a huge win in my book. Not surprised that thing sold. Only a meager $500 premium. But perhaps you prefer Great Berry Burst Metallic. This time done up on a 335, it's got a very small premium to it as compared to the figure tops. But ah, it actually does have a bursted edge. It's just kind of a slightly darker purple. I know burst is in the name, but here even in the light you can just barely tell. But we might have like some greenish and silver metal flake within it for our sparkles. And it looks like they matched the back but left the neck alone. And that is looking like a satin finish to me, so this probably actually started life as one of the 335 satins. Which means this is a much bigger premium than I was initially expecting. But how about Blue Penumbra, the signature guitar of everyone's favorite medical company? Or perhaps we're talking about this kind of penumbra. Either way, it's a perimeter blue burst, standard 50s with the cream plastics, and I think it looks pretty attractive. But they had to give you something a little bit more special on the back. 
This is one of those strange times where I really appreciate what they're doing here, but it kind of looks that weird and out of place. But you have a blue stinger that has a gold surround around it. I just love that honey color that they've got on the back. The wood and finish combination just worked well together there. Was it worth the $500 premium? Definitely. But whoa! I missed this on launch day. They called it Pelham Blue Burst, it was 5200 but when I first looked at it I thought, okay, blacked out hardware, everything. With a Pelham Blue Burst, you don't find that too often on a custom, but my friends, that's not an ebony fretboard right there. No wonder those inlays look so strange. It's because A, the blue finish is pulling out the blues of the mother of pearl, and then that is a rosewood fretboard on a custom. We haven't seen that too often ever since Richlight got kicked out of standard production in the custom shop, but it reigned supreme from 2011 till early 2019. But it's rocking custom bucker pickups, they blacked out the headstock, they continued it on the back, sides, neck, all that good stuff. But now what I'm really curious is what did this start life as? Custom Shop 90595. So that is a 2019 serial number, and it was within the first 600 made. That might have been right on the tail end of the Rich Light era, and somebody wanted a real wooden fretboard before Ebony came back in full force. That's a pretty unique one. But whoa, it's still available! I guess not everyone has my appreciation of unique pieces. Following that up, we've got an Epiphone USA Casino in graphite metallic for 34. This one's pretty dark, but we'll adjust the contrast for your viewing pleasure. It's just a nice kind of sparkly black dual P90 pickups. If you're interested about this model, we reviewed it a couple of years back. And your eyes do not deceive you. The neck was left alone, just the body that got painted. Next up, we've got Yahello Yellow, Les Paul Special for two grand. I had to look that one up and uh, maybe it's an anime reference. Looks like they used it before. I do remember talking about that. Which, by the way, did you know Gibson does do signature guitars for animes? Check out the Goro Yudo signature R9. And Epiphone just recently did a bocce custom. But that was on lottery system only and unfortunately I did not win the lottery. But yeah, it's a yellow Les Paul Special. I don't really see anything else too fancy. All right, except for them removing the pick guard. That's why it looks kind of cheap. But check out the standard 60s. It was called Fool's Glow. Let's adjust the contrast. Do you see anything? Nah, that just a blackish satin hue. Headstock looks a little bit right, but hey, what's that kind of like glowingness it has around it? It's a mustard yellow back and edge. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this would work better if it was like really blingy in your face gold. I'd be curious if that looks good on a strap or not, because I'm a big fan of the side profiles of guitars. So black, cream, and yellow. It's certainly interesting and certainly available. And whoa, 11 pounds. That wraps up the USA mod collection. Now let's check out the European side. They're still kicking it out with some new ones. So first off, we get black ruby satin. While being a dull satin finish, it's got that dark border with a really deep, rich crimson red center. But for some reason, this one gives Jeff Beck vibes. Yeah, it doesn't have the wrap tail, but it's almost kind of ox bloodish. But it's the cream of the binding and the plastics that really complement each other. But our headstock is left basic. And the back just looks like it's one solid color. But speaking of ox blood, we've got Blood Moon Satin on a 60 standard. Wow, that's all I'm gonna say. Add that to the custom color series. I could see a lot of guys digging that. It works well with those figure tops. It's kind of like the dark purple burst that we had reviewed, but in a different way that appeals to other people. And the satin finish actually works pretty well there, but they threw a B5 Bigsby fiber made on it just for good measure. Ooh, nice. Full burst, headstock, neck, body. Although it looks like they might have omitted the sides. That's a pretty good one. But my instant favorite this week was Seaweed Sunburst. Kind of an interesting name to give it. It's a dark metallic blue with more of a bluish green center that's still transparent. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You still get the wood grain and the flame and the very direct center. But it looks like there might be the burst color still underneath that with the yellows and reds. And then we've got a Les Paul custom style pick guard. And then, ooh, interesting choice to leave the back and sides alone. So they only messed with the top finish. But this is one of those times where I think that side profile shot works incredibly well. But now it's time for the demo shops. They're shut down. They didn't upload at all this week. Nothing new. No big sales to report. But at least the mod collection was good. Now, the Gibson USA side of things, I did want to make mention because a lot of people missed it in the last episode because it was just put on the screen as a text. Many of the 
older guitars. If you click I love this listing, add it to my favorites, putting it into your watch list. There have been reports that Gibson will send out 20% discounts. I'm not sure if that's still active this week, but I had a few people message me like on these double necks thinking, hey, that's a pretty good deal, which yeah, if you're in the market for a double neck. So worth a shot, I can't guarantee it. But what I can guarantee is Reverb will automatically send you other dealers listings if you save something like this and another shop is running a sale. Yeah, see, this is exactly what I was talking about. I added that 335 Satin to my favorites list. And within two minutes, I got an offer from Tone Shop Guitars for like 500 bucks off. A brand new one. But what stood out to me is look at this access custom. The Bengal Burst turns out different every single guitar, but this one is so dark in a good way, I think. Although if I ordered this sight unseen and this is what showed up and you, you were really hoping for that yellowed center, I could see how somebody could be disappointed. But to me, I think that looks perfect. It's like a new take on a dark red. The whole double staining effect really transforms this finish. Everything else was looking pretty good with a 2022 serial number. Listed at 4,600. Think I'm gonna try that. Hopefully they send me 20% off thing. <laughs> I doubt it on the new listings. That was probably just the old stuff. But this one I just thought was a black 50 standard, but no, it's one of those dark purples. I would argue this one's maybe too dark, but maybe they just didn't have their camera set up right that day. So they can check out this full review and demo if you're interested. But hey, 500 bucks off a Gibson.com exclusive that you can't get discounted. Can't go wrong there. And then they also had the standard 50s that kind of looks like one of the old Les Paul Moderns. Posted up at 3000 but they put the P94 humbucker size P90s in it. So that made it kind of unique, but then super dark vibes on the front. But then you flip it over to the back and it's one of those really lightly colored mahogany bodies with a relatively dark neck. It definitely has a lot of different colors going on. And they had a few other releases, however, nothing really caught my attention outside of those. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.